Hello, I'm Colin Wright, and I'm going to answer some of your questions. The first question today, how would you describe your audience? It's, it's interesting. This is something that I think about sometimes because it's a very difficult thing to lock down. I have a lot of very different people who believe very different things, who live all over the planet, and, and as a result have very different perspectives on the world, who read my work, who watch my work, who listen to my podcast. And I'm very fortunate in that I get to hear from a lot of them too. People tend to write me a whole lot and tell me about themselves, which you should totally do if you haven't done before. If you go to colin.io slash contact, you can find my email address there. But to me, that's part of the joy of getting to do something like this, is being exposed to all different types of people who come from so many different backgrounds and have so many different viewpoints on the world. But if I was to try to be somewhat reductive and to try to come up with some general properties, some attributes of people who tend to listen and read and watch my work, uh, I would say that they tend to be very open-minded, typically people who are trying to grow in some way, trying to expose themselves to new things. I don't get a lot of haters. Like I don't, I have a lot of friends who are also writers, who are also podcasters, who are also on YouTube, and they get a lot of people who are very critical and mean, who, who are very angry. I don't get a lot of that. And it, it might be partially because I you know, will go through and delete comments of anybody who's just being a jerk. I, I don't need that here. I'm not, my, my business model is not predicated on clicks or views typically, so I don't need them to come and generate outrage to get people all riled up and involved for me to make a living. So typically the people that tend to come to my work and come back over and over tend to be very open and people who, even if they disagree with me or with other people who are in the comments section or whatnot, they tend to be people who are very open to discussion and to present their point of view and in some cases to have their mind changed as well, which I think is, is incredibly awesome. It's a, a very difficult place to reach, I think, in your intellectual development to be able to very intentionally go into a situation where your beliefs will be challenged repeatedly. And that's something that I try to do with all of my work. I try to present new ideas to people in a way that is palatable. And I feel very fortunate to have a group of people in my audience who, who are open to that and willing to do the same, who are willing to have that discussion, who are willing to consider difficult things repeatedly. Uh, that, that's probably as specific as I can get though, because beyond that, it's not one age demographic, it's not one belief system, it's not one country of residence or background. I really do have people from all over the map, literally geographically, but also in terms of age demographics and economic status and different jobs and different lifestyles. So it's not just, you know, 30 to 45 year old white males who speak English, who live in this area and make a certain amount of money. It, it's really, really bad, it, or it would be really bad if I was trying to just like sell ads on everything because marketing wise, it is terrible to have a diverse audience the way that I do. But for me and for what I do and for the types of conversations I want to have, it is perfect. So thank you guys very much. Do not change. And the second question today, when should I show other people my why? And how do I know it's good enough? Uh, in, in context, in the context of the conversation where this question was asked, I believe what is meant by this is, when should I show other people what I'm all about? Why I do what I do? And how do I know if my why, my purpose behind the things that I do, is good enough? Uh, to answer that second question first, I don't think that there is a scale. There's no rubric that says this is a good reason and good rationale for doing things and this is a bad one. You know that it is good if it's something that fulfills you and something that keeps you moving toward different goals and keeps you growing and helps you become a better version of yourself. There's no outside metric by which you can judge your why. Uh, 
Uh, so don't look for it, don't go for it. Just look at yourself and say, am I growing? Am I a better person than I was yesterday? If so, then your reason for doing things is probably a good one, at least for who you are now and what you are trying to accomplish now. How do you know when it's a good time to show other people your reason for doing things? I don't know that there is a bad time for it. I, I do think that sometimes it's difficult right away. Like if you are just meeting somebody now and you're shaking hands and you're telling them your deepest, darkest feelings and everything, the, the core reason for living and the reason that you get up in the morning, maybe it's a little too early, but maybe not. I mean, maybe that's interesting. Maybe it's something that will then explain everything that you do after that point. And being very open about this, I think, is a good thing. I, I don't think you're required to share your rationale for doing everything, but I do think that it shines a light on everything that you do, uh, from, from the way that you interact with people to the work that you do to the reason that you eat a certain way or vote a certain way. So to me, there's not really a super bad reason as long as it's something that you know, makes sense socially and that makes sense in terms of the work that you're presenting. If you are like just starting a blog or something and you're writing a bunch of stuff but people don't know why, it may be a good idea to put that why, that philosophy on your about page or on like a start here page so that people understand the context in which you're writing. But I mean there's no set good and bad way to present this as far as I know. I find that the more I express this, the more often I express this, the better I become at expressing my reason for doing things. So that's something else to consider, that if you are holding off on presenting it because you think it's not good enough or, or you think you're not being clear enough, you might want to consider speaking about it or writing about it more frequently because it is something that gets better with practice. And you might even realize as you're presenting these ideas to other people that some of it doesn't quite make sense or some of it is not true. You, you think that you're doing things because of this why, but you're actually doing it for some other reason. And so you might want to go back in and tweak and recalibrate and rethink a lot of things that you're doing. This is kind of how I developed my own philosophy. And a lot of people who, who I respect a great deal who even have very different ideas about things than I do. This is how they developed their ideas as well, is that they just spoke about it a lot and really mold over their own beliefs in a lot of different contexts and with a lot of different people, and then slowly but surely whittled it into something that looked like them, something that felt very personal and something very specific to them. So, so the very short answer of, uh, of, of, to these questions is, there's no wrong time to do it unless it's like really crazy inappropriate for the situation. But otherwise I'd say express and express and express, look at what you're saying, figure out if it actually makes sense and then you know, act accordingly from there. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a like or you can share it or you can subscribe to my channel. If you have a question you'd like me to answer in a future video, you can shoot me an email or contact me via one of my many social network presences. Uh, you can find all of those at colin.io slash contact or just find me most places at Colin is my name. You can also leave a comment in the comment section below if you like. If you'd like to find out more about me and my work, you can go to colin.io. There you will find a full about section and you'll find all of my books. You can find my podcast at letsknowthings.com and my blog at exilelifestyle.com. And you can find a large number of videos about all kinds of topics here on YouTube. So I highly recommend checking out the archive if you have not already. Thanks again, and I hope you are having a lovely day. Hopefully that wasn't a creepy thing to say.